So they asked me to talk about my life and sort of how I got to be a scientist. So I'll take you through some stuff here in, in a moment, my life in science. So my family life, I was uh, the youngest of four kids. I had three sisters. Uh, we were not a wealthy family. We were actually pretty uh, poor, strapped for money. We didn't have much money. Uh, you don't need to come from a good family. You don't need to have money. You just need to be determined to make something out of your life. The first thing that I was interested in were dinosaurs. I didn't know they existed. I went to a small Catholic school. They weren't teaching a lot of evolution back then. And, um, um, and so I was just amazed that there were, had been these giant animals that lived millions of years ago and that we could study them by looking at their bones and learning about them. So there's this vast ancient history that I had no idea existed. You think about it, you know, there's a little kid running around playing with toys and he learns that there's this, you know, ancient history. So this life has gone on for, for millions of years before you even showed up and then things are very small and then things are very large. And so it just started changing the way I viewed and perceived my world. And I really was interested in chemistry because uh, it just amazed me that you could just, everything was made of something smaller and smaller and smaller building blocks. Even the atoms are made out of different building blocks. So I got a chemistry set and did a bunch of chemistry experiments, which I basically uh, meant that I made uh, perfume smelling soap and uh, turned things colors and once blew up my kitchen. Um, uh, but I got interested in chemistry, and that sort of set me on the life of science. I, I decided to go to college. My teachers thought I should go to college. No one in my family had ever gone before, um, but I was able to get into uh, the University of Illinois. Um, you know, if you try hard, and, and like I did, you can make the most out of what you have. So I graduated from college. I went to grad school in biology at MIT, and I, even though I wanted to be a chemist, at my senior year in college, I learned about something called DNA and that you could do recombinant DNA and, and switch it around and recode DNA. And I thought, wow, I want to do that. Um, so that's how I got here. And now I want to tell you a little bit about biology and the way I think about it. I think that a lot of people think biology is just way too complicated. It's much easier to comprehend with one simple realization. And that is that a cell of which we're all made of billions of cells, is much like a city. So a city is like a cell, and I'll give you some examples of how that is and, um, and how cities run and how they run like a cell. So for cities to run and be maintained, they need many different types of machines. Cells are also run and maintained by machines, just like cities. The only difference is that their machines being very small, um, are not made out of metal and plastic. Um, they're, they're made of proteins. Cells have motors. They have scissors and wheels and levers. They even have things like duct tape to stick things together. Uh, they have uh, garbage disposal and, and incinerators. They have socket wrenches. They have delivery trucks. They have all the sorts of equipment and machines that you just look around and see you every day, it's just that they're made out of proteins. And so duplicating a cell is like duplicating a small city, and in order to do that, you need blueprints. And in the case of a cell, the blueprints are the DNA. Now, the part of research that I got involved in was trying to understand what cells, or how cells try to make sure that the blueprints don't get changed. And if you don't do this, you get mutations. And mutations can cause developmental disorders in children. They can cause cancer in adults and children. So you really want to get the blueprints right, because if you start changing the, the information uh, in the cells, uh, the cells start doing different things. So I discovered something that we call the DNA damage response, which is like a command and control center. And it flips a lot of switches on a lot of proteins and tells them to change because it's so important to duplicate your DNA right. So I hope that that makes it a little bit simpler. I think that if you set your mind to something and you apply yourself, you can accomplish your goals no matter where you start from. They don't have to be science goals. They can be any kind of goal. You know, but 
It's all about you. It's not about your family. It's not about your friends or what other people think about you. It's what you want to do with your life, and uh, you can do whatever you want with it. So anyway, I'll stop here. Thank you.